Good morning, Jeff. Um, welcome to our COIL Perspectives interviews, and if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself for us. Hi, I'm Jeff Haywood. I'm Professor of Education and Technology at the University of Edinburgh, and I'm Vice Principal, what you would call Provost in US Speak. Terrific, thank you. And uh, just listened to your talk this morning at the ALT conference, and I was very intrigued by your perspectives. The first question I have for you is where do you see education being in a relatively short amount of time, three to five years? I think that, I think that five years is probably a better, a better horizon to look at. Five years from now, there will be a lot more fully online education being offered in um, the US, in, in the UK, in Europe. And actually, of course, and we, need, we mustn't forget this, out across other countries that are focusing on it, India, China, Southeast Asia, etc. Online, online is set to grow. And not all of that online education will be offered by traditional universities in traditional ways. And I think that many of our students in our traditional university settings will be taking online courses from those other providers, not just from us. So um, do, you, do you think that'll present a threat to higher education as we know it, these, these new providers? I think, I think it could be an opportunity and a threat. I, I clearly, one threat is, is if they target the more um, financially useful mm. of our areas like business, law, medicine, etc. Sure. Um, that clearly could take some quite important trade away. But on the other hand, I think that if we can allow our students on our degree programs to take courses from other providers and we recognize them and we give them credit for taking them, we can capitalize on that wider range of education out there. Okay, we'll have to quality assure it in some way and be sure that it's fit for purpose, but we do this with other universities now. I can see no reason why, with traditional settings, I see no reason why we shouldn't do it in the online space. I see no reason why we shouldn't do it from providers other than um, publicly funded universities. Very good. Thank you. I'm just going to do that. So the second question then is um, to this idea of maybe having a broader set of opportunities for our learners in, in different formats and such, more online as you say. What do you think the barriers are for us achieving that sort of an outcome? I think that we often lack leadership and vision at the top of university level. Indeed, actually, for those of us who are in the public state-funded sectors, a lack of vision in our funders, and that's very important. Actually, a lack of vision amongst those who do the quality assurance and the accreditation. And that includes professional bodies like, like those for medicine and law and education. Engineering. And a very sure. conservative view. And, and we will need to change that. Those are barriers. I think that the, the thing we have to do is to get a vision of what we think higher education will look like, what our university will look like, maybe 10 or more years out, and then decide which steps we need to take to get there. But they'll have to be purposeful steps. Online courses, online degrees, acceptance of courses from other places don't come by accident. They come because we've planned to do them, and we've planned to do them at scale and to be systematic. So it requires a vision at the top level, and then I think it requires an encouragement and an acceptance and a valuing of innovation by faculty and rewarding teaching, rewarding innovation in teaching, as much as we reward innovation in, in research or in service. We've got to make this a valuable, seen as valuable part of what faculty do. And sadly, that isn't, that isn't universally true. Yes. So you've touched on this uh, last question then for you, which has to do about the, uh, the leadership skills. What do, if I'm uh, an emerging leader in this area, what skill sets or competencies might I need in order to operate in this new environment? I think, I think for any leader, they've got to have an empathy and a real sense of understanding what digital education is. And I suppose a glib answer might be, go and study on an online course. If, the, if your university runs courses on e-tutoring or online teaching, 
go and take those if you haven't. You've got to have a sense of what high quality online education means. All of us who have come through a traditional education setting know what a lecture is, we know what a seminar is, a lab and all of that stuff. For many of us, we do not have the same sense for the online. And I think that one can never be entirely even-handed unless one's actually experienced good quality online. And so it's important to get close to it. It's important to read and, and to have people who are knowledgeable around you, who, whose advice you can trust, who understand the direction of travel we're going to take and can help support policy development, can horizon scan, bring that knowledge back into the university so that one can come up with a plan and that plan must engage the faculty and I think it must engage the students too because this is their educational futures we're talking about. So it's, it's quite a consultative exercise. One or two universities have been doing this. I've been quite interested watching MIT, for instance, mm -hmm. recently that's been doing the future of, of MIT. That kind of forward look, systematic, and engaging the different communities that require it, bringing in the expertise, I think that's what one needs to do. It's, it's a sine qua non, I think, for mm -hmm. success. Very good. Thank you very much.